Westworld? Are you up? No. Uh, they lost me. They lost you all together? Yeah, they lost me. Uh, who Last was season was not great, so... Yeah, uh, what, three? Yeah. I didn't even try it. They lost me mid two. Really? Yeah. Uh, two was... I thought two was good, but yeah. th- three was super challenging, and this fourth one is weird. I might have to give it another go. A lot of things just kind of lose me, you know? I tried Stranger Things when it first dropped, and it kind of lost me. I mean, then I just rewatched it, and it is good. It's it's fine. It's yeah. just different. It's yeah. different than what you would expect. Yeah. It, yeah, it's, yeah, and it's not so much the horror-y things. Like, I don't mind. Because even the first one, you, there's like a hint of dark creeping in. But what yeah. I liked is like the 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 balance of like kids doing 80 shit and then yeah. the dark, where now it's just dark, dark. And that's fine. And I also didn't love how much, spoiler alerts, how much like guns are going on in the new season of Stranger Things. Mm. It just felt like a totally different genre. Yeah, you it's know, like, horror this time. Yeah, like, but, actual horror. Yeah, and the horror doesn't again, but there's just like like actiony shooting scenes. Yeah, where it, before it was like more sci fi e. Yeah, brain power. It's a little more, um, a little more Amityville. Yeah, and it was fine. A little bit more. Um, oh my god, the Kubrick one, Shining. A little more Shining. Yeah, I've never seen it. I I've never seen it either because I'm not a big Stephen King fan, other than Stand by Me, which. Yeah, it was just a lot. And same with, same with Westworld. I absolutely loved season one. I, I had it in like my top five when people say best shows or favorite mm-hmm. shows. See, like Game of Thrones, probably Stranger Things, Ozark, Westworld was in there. And maybe I'll have to give season two another chance to see if I can even handle season three. But A, a part of it is just not having a good idea what the hell is going on. <clears throat> And I realized that that I mean these are the same some of the same people that made Lost, and so I yeah. never knew what the fuck was going on there either. But the issue with that, mm-hmm. and I had the same thing with Lost, is I wonder if they don't have a clue what the fuck's going on. Yeah, I think as, that's as a writer, real, real and that possible. I don't like. I'm like, now you're just making shit up because you've you've set the foundation that this there's chaos. Yeah, and so now you're taking advantage of that by not having a direction. But you, motherfucker, need the direction. Yeah. It's okay to keep me lost. Yeah, but you need to know where you're going. Yeah, and I don't think they do. Yeah. We're, we're like season one of Westworld has a perfect arc. Yeah, yeah. Right? And and then I think maybe part of that, too, it's on them. But what loses me is that the the mystery is gone. Yeah. And same with Stranger Things, right? Like, oh, we figured out there's this upside down world in season one. Now it's kind of gone. Uh-huh. And like now you're just fucking with the same it, thing, right? And like... Seasons three and are we season four of Stranger Things? Yeah, I don't know if you watched them all, but yeah, yeah. They, they, now they're kind of the same thing, right? Uh, like, yeah, yeah. Now, now we know how the connection to the the yeah. upside down was made. Yeah, there's a that little we didn't more. Really understand that before? Yeah, there's a little more unveiling, <clears throat> but like that's not something you need to know. No. You know what I mean? It's not like a key. Like there could just be this chaotic world. Like no. it doesn't matter. And and uh, talking about like we talk about Obi Wan, like oh yeah, some, some things where I think Star Wars kind of works. Where they also have that precedent. Like, the foundation is, like, we're in outer space in this time long ago. Anything can fucking happen. Right. You know, they could we could find a new breed that does this. Like, it, you know, they've set that. But even within Obi-Wan, they, like, play these bumpers of Star Wars. And some people didn't like it, and that's fine. I don't care. I love the uh, every movie. I like Jar Jar Binks. Fuck you all. I didn't really care. I don't care if you like it. I like it. And, and Obi-Wan feels like Star Wars to me. And nothing crazy happens, mm-hmm. but nothing not crazy happens. You know what I mean, and, and so I like that. Where Stranger Things, they're they're like reaching for something that's not there. Westworld kind of felt like that. Um, Game of Thrones, just writing fell off. You know, there's always kind of a, a something the, going that on. That last season of, of I, I and now okay, this is this is another issue that I have. Why does everybody want to make a prequel? Instead when of a, what everybody wants to see is a sequel. <clears throat> yeah. You want to see what what more is happening with those characters in the world that we already understand. Yeah, or or they'll choose like a random character to do a spin-off. Yeah. Like I never watched even though I heard Better Call Saul was pretty good. Um, I I watched parts of the first season, but I w- I was never a giant Breaking Bad fan. I wasn't either, either for some reason. I watched I the final it. season of uh, like the first few episodes in the final season. I I I sandwiched um Breaking Bad. Uh, I just had the bread. I didn't yeah. eat the middle. Yeah, um, I like it. Yeah, I mean, it's good. It's just too dark for me. Uh, just like that I doesn't mean, bug me. Did you not like Dexter then? I did not even watch Dexter. Yeah, Dexter was not. Really I didn't. I didn't have Showtime or whatever yeah. that was on. So. Yeah, I don't know what it was on back in the day. I watched it as it came out back in the day, and I really liked it. I'm always fascinated by how people do their storytelling. I'm not necessarily always fascinated by the story. Yeah, that's fair. That's uh, fair. 
Um, yeah, I, I, I want to love Westworld more, but again, I, we talked about it. Like, what literally inspired my part of this gym and the clothing and stuff is like art direction and like going into new world and sci-fi and uh-huh. like all that kind of explorative type shit in the beginning of Westworld is that uh-huh. and you're doing it with a person like I like Disneyland and everyone's like you're a grown ass man like Disneyland like fuck you bitch like I'm not wearing Mickey Mouse ears every day and I'm not yeah. like, singing the Lion King as I'm walking through the gym but I love the attention to detail and how much they try to throw you in a world like I yeah. think it's amazing and yeah. that's what Westworld does as a viewer following that first guy in the first season yeah the the part of the Part of the underlying aesthetic of the gym is the thought of a um, an old California theme park that's yeah. been that was closed and then has been reopened. Yeah, that's, you know, it, as something else. Yeah, it feels kind of forty nine ery. Yeah, which a lot of Sacramento does. Yeah, you know, it feels kind of yeah, like there should be some dude in the back making Levi's. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Now, while while we were in Vegas, we went to Dragon's Lair. Yeah. And uh, I will say that they have done a thing with the with the lighting that I, you know, thought about here didn't do. Uh, they don't necessarily. I don't know if they're necessarily Kino flows, but they are. It, it's a type of lighting. It's very Instagram light. That is very Instagram, very aesthetic, um, a- a- aesthetically pleasing for looking at people. Marcus sent me a reel this morning from a gym in Italy, I believe, and. You know, the short story is that they have a posing room that's more uh, or less like a large dressing room mm-hmm. rather than a full. Because a lot of posing rooms at a gyms are like old aerobics rooms. Yeah. You know, this is a little bit bigger than the biggest dressing room we've ever been in. Mm-hmm. They have an auxiliary Bluetooth for your music. And then they have dials to fuck around with the lights to like give you the most jacked picture ever. Like you can, they have like corner lights overhead and you kind of dim or plus or whatever and like build your perfect like studio for posing in pictures. I thought it was sick. Like obnoxious. That, yeah. But that's sick. crazy. Yeah. I mean, I love it. And I, yeah. Lighting is just one of my favorite things yeah. to fuck with. Yeah. And, and it's obviously a reel. So they're just kind of quick cutting the room. So you can't right. really tell. But it looks like they have like corner lights and then an overhead and there's a dial for each. That's amazing. Yeah. It was sick. No, not something I would ever like think of doing. I guess if you, I don't know. I, the actual application for like bodybuilding is probably not there because like you have certain lights when you're on stage that they probably know the direction you're coming from, and you probably want to emulate that when you're posing to know what you look like on stage. But like Instagrammable type things, you can kind of like never lose as a business. Have you seen that? paint that's supposed to be the blackest paint ever um i've heard of it yeah Yeah, there's like yeah. a i don't remember if i saw it on youtube yeah. or on 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 reels yeah where a guy paints the inside of a room with that with that paint yeah and it's showing, a little gnarly yeah it's a th- yeah it's a thing it's crazy yeah uh we talked about off to here talk about our disneyland theme it's just like disneyland invented a green that like meshes your eye with everything so like you can't even tell sometimes but when you're walking through disneyland all your eyes catch are like the themes that's going on. So like mm-hmm. you're in Futureland, you see the rockets and you see the stars or whatever. But there's like regular offices in the d- horizon, but yeah. you, your eye doesn't pick them up because they're painted this green. Yeah. Or like the trash cans are painted a certain green, unless they want to make it a rocket ship trash can. Right. If it's a regular, it's painted this, I forgot what they call it, something green. <clears> and it's just like your eye just kind of like doesn't want to look at it if you want register to, it if you want to put up a privacy screen or a or a trellis or something like that in your in your backyard yeah. and you don't want it to to dominate the view but you also want the privacy yeah you paint it green yeah it's just like yeah and this one in particular is like not a sea foam but it's kind of like a little bit on a sea foamy green i don't know i like that shit yeah the smells they kick out in the air i like all that bullshit I love all that. Um, so we have a question. Do you have it? I've, I didn't choose one. Oh, okay. There's uh, five if you want to choose. One. There's about five that we're probably going to tackle eventually. I mean, the real the bot the bottom one's real easy. If you uh, hit that one. So every Friday, guys, if you are new, we do one good question. Join our Discord. You get exclusives on clothing, sales that no one else gets, uh, like-minded community, and all first sneak peeks of 3SB and Third Street Barbell. If you go to 50percentfacts.com, there's a link to that Discord. All you have to do is join. 
never been on Discord. It's basically like a big group chat or an old school forum, um, but it's just for our community. And so there's different servers on there. Probably your favorite video game or your favorite crypto company has a server there, but ours is a good company. You can find our link on that website. Go in there. And then on the left, there's tabs. So there's just the group chat where everyone's just talking shit all day long. We have some clothing ones. We have some lifting ones, some video game ones. Uh, but one is called One Good Question. Go in there and ask us anything. Ask us your best question. If you are chosen, we'll answer it on a Friday episode and send you a little gift from Good Company. Yeah, we were going to catch up on those. <laughs> we were going to do that, and then we had a little break. So Yeah, we'll get there. Um, so the your le- the last question is the one It's you're a quick about? one if you want to bang it out. Yeah, sure. Uh, what would your, your guys' ideal non-intrusive fan in, uh, encounter in the wild be um i think we answered this one two ways that'll give us a little bit more slack yeah. uh uh fans of us part part one part two people we're fans of oh yeah that's cool like how would that go yeah um you see i don't know so i've never met like i guess i have a lot of the famous people that i've met are in non-random occasions. Yeah. Like, I went to Stone Cold Steve Austin's house. Right. And not that, like, I'm a mega fan, but, like, I'm sure I had his T-shirt in seventh grade, and I watched him on TV every day, you know? And so, like, he's making me a cappuccino. So, you know, so... <laughs> yeah, like, when I hung out with him, he absolutely gave me shit the entire time. Just, yeah. like, joking. Like, no, just, no, he's great. Know. But you know what I mean? So it's not like I just saw him in the wild, and I decided to right, talk to him Right, right, right. If it. I saw somebody in the wild, the one occasion I could think... And it was just a gut reaction is I'm walking around L.A. and I saw John Bones Jones. It's like seven years ago. He's on the come up. He's probably the champ at the time. And I think he's by himself. He was just mm-hmm. walking down the street. And I just say, hey, man, like, keep killing it. I just gave him a fist bump as we cross paths. Mm-hmm. And that was just gut reaction. Because if it wasn't gut reaction, I probably would have done nothing. Yeah. I don't like to bug people, you know. Yeah, I don't like to bug people either. That's... Um, especially if they're, like, actually famous. I know they're getting it everywhere they go. Like Bones, probably. And, mm-hmm. and I know he probably didn't mind either. He fist bumped me and just smiled and kept walking. Um, and now we have a bunch of mutual friends, but this was even before that. So I'll, um, I don't know what I would do. I don't think... I saw Michael J- Jordan. We went to a celebrity golf tournament mm-hmm. um, with Mike Sean, and mm-hmm. Mike Sean shook his hand, but he's kind of there to do that. It's kind of a meet and greet. Like, yeah, he's there yeah. to play golf, but it's kind of a meet and greet. So I can't think of any other occasion of that nature. Um... And, and I can't think of anyone like they, they, they walked in like, holy cow, you know, like I don't know what I would do. Or if I saw him at a restaurant, I don't know, like maybe Michael Jackson. But even that, you know. I well, if you see Michael Jackson now. You get a picture. Yeah, clearly. And yeah, you, yeah, you document it yeah. that he's Call back X-Files. from the dead. But yeah, I don't know. Even, on, you know, I don't know what caliber of person I'm freaking out about. Um. There are people that I would definitely. I don't know if it, it's difficult to 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 name a specific person just because, like, you know, because it changes for me all the time. Yeah. Um. But I th- I think sometimes when I'm like watching a TV show or or a movie or or some other kind of programming, and I think, well, if I met that person, what I would want to do is say, you know, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Just thank you. Thank you for for. Yeah what you bring to the to the to the table that's pretty much it i, w- I want to like be friends with people yeah no that that is a totally different yeah, thing like yeah like i like like grab a beer with vince vaughn like i think vince vaughn is such like a character actor that he's probably hilarious yeah. you know what i mean because he is the same guy in every fucking yeah. movie and so like he's probably really funny to grab a beer with or like big bruno mars fan you know but like i you know it'd be cool to chat but there's not a lot of i don't know I don't know why. And I think we talked about this past. Like I've always like uh, been fans of like uh, sci-fi shit or like fake shit. Mm-hmm. You know, like I'm a Yoda fan. I'm a I'm a Mufasa fan. So, Rafiki. Yeah, but I'm not like a. I've never. So if you see Yoda in the wild, like even basketball, like I grew up loving basketball. Like I don't know if I freak out. I hung out with Luau Dang. Uh, Luau Dang. Mm-hmm. You know. It, I was a huge Bulls fan growing up. It's kind of hard not to be when you're in the 90s. They had a little bit of a lull. Then they had a comeback, and two of my favorite players in the league were Luol Deng and Derrick Rose. Mm-hmm. And then now I'm at Luol's house. Yeah. You know? And so, like, it was weird, but then, like, we became actual friends. So then I'm not going to, you know. And he knows that I grew up playing basketball. Mm-hmm. Not, I don't know if he knows, like, I was a mega fan, but, like, I don't know. I don't know what I would do. Like Allen Iverson, I'm a big fan. Yeah, but if I saw him in public, I'm probably not doing shit. Yeah, yeah. And there are people that that like 
that I would love to have met a long time ago who now I think are well, they sort of made maybe become caricatures of themselves over time because it's difficult to yeah you know like Francis Ford Coppola like nobody's had the kind of impact on cinema in my lifetime yeah um really than Francis Ford Coppola but he does I mean now he makes wine for the most part I mean yeah and, and, and he keeps remaking it not remaking but like George Lucasing his movies yeah and, and just as you get older, and some people not, and I kind of wish I wasn't this way, but like, yeah, like people just start on pedestals. Yeah, it'd be cool I if they that were. That's... It'd be cool if they were. Uh, but even as a kid, they just weren't even that much. Uh, and and uh, yeah, okay. So so flip it around to people meeting us, and this is a, a principle that I'm going to apply, and it's pretty easy if you think about it. Treat them like regular people. So treat us like regular people. Yeah. However, um. The line on that is the familiarity, like so. I'm a re- treat treat. If you meet a celebrity, treat him like a regular person, but realize that it's a regular person you don't really know. Yeah, yeah. Even like in Vegas, uh, somebody was polite because he asked me, but he's like, "Can I have a hug?" And I was like, "Nah, I don't know, man. <laughs> like, you know, we do like a bro hug, you know. So we did a little bro hug, but like, yeah, I don't know you, you know. I yeah. don't really want to hug you." And, like, the level of things are so different. One, because, like, we live in Sacramento, which is a smaller city compared to more things, like, in terms of, like, podcasts or Instagram or YouTube following, just living here is less. And then, two, like, I literally just don't go anywhere. Yeah. And so, like, it just doesn't affect my life, you know? I'll go to dinner here and there. And, like, yeah, I went to dinner with some friends, Liz and Tyler, the other day. And mm-hmm. some dude, you know, watched me and Omar. But, like, that's very rare just because I don't go out. Um the question is like most non-intrusive and in that case uh here's like a funny-ish story so i'm riding my bike i think to the gym it's like two years ago yeah. uh eh, it was probably pre-covid we're probably maybe we're doing renovations yeah. uh, i don't know i don't know i went the fuck I was. at some point in time yes yeah, somewhere within the last three years i'm riding my bike right here downtown and uh, i'm stopped at a light on my bike and like an infinity or something rolls by and two dudes just like hop out the window like saw the mic and they throw up the peace sign uh-huh. like, yeah, it's very non-intrusive and cool and i throw up a peace sign back and then I ate shit on my. I'm oh. with. I think I'm with Kyle, and I have my fucking. I have my uh, straps on my thing. Yeah, I don't think they saw the, the toe straps. Yeah, I got the toe straps. Oh and my god! I, I don't know if, if I if I just like whip my head or something. So one foot's down. We're complete stopped. Left foot's in the strap. I don't know if I just lost balance or looked to the side, and then I just slow motion tip. <laughs> As these dudes are driving off in the distance, maybe they saw that. I wish they would have filmed it. It would have been way God. better. Yeah. yeah, but that uh, that's really good for non-intrusive. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, say hi. Yeah, but a lot of them are at like Interesting. places I expect to meet people, like an expo. Or yeah, like. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's the unexpected <clears throat> ones that really make I like. I think probably this question was prompted by me saying a couple weeks ago that was I had a, I, a series of weird encounters at at Home Depot. And yeah, I got a little caught up. Yeah, I um yeah. And uh, weirdest place I ever had anybody recognize me was at Niagara Falls. Mine that wasn't was bizarre. It, mine wasn't that weird, but it was because it was at the Arnold, but we were at like a nightclub, mm. and dude's trying to take a selfie while I'm at the urinal. No. Yeah, and I'm, I and I don't think I was inebriated, but if I w- either way, just I don't know what he's. Uh, he said, My, "Can we get a picture?" I'm like, "Yeah, man, just not in this exact facility." Give me ten feet and let me put my little pee pee away before you snag I, a pic. I might end up on a different website. Yeah, I have had I've had people talk to me. Yeah, while yeah, talk, I was peeing. talks. You know, that's already an awkward thing. I feel yeah. like whether regardless, you know, like hey, Bob, how's your day? Well, while, while I'm touching my pee 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 in, but when you're trying to take a picture, you know, or say hey, hey, it's okay. It's still awkward, but if you're that comfortable, that's cool, bro. Yeah, I think you're right. The familiarity uh, vibe trying to hug or trying to do something when I I don't really know you. Uh, I'm not a hugger to begin with, you know? It's just not who I am. And so now you don't know, you know, you you listen to my voice a lot, but now you're trying to hug. But a lot of it's cool. I'm open to hugs, just so everybody knows. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm okay with hugs. Yeah, I'll do a little fist bump. I don't know, and and the the events are just so much less, right? Like this USAPL thing was the first event of this nature I've been to in probably four years. Yeah, we were with Bart. A lot of people recognize Bart, yeah. and and there was yeah, a, there was a poor Bart gets it everywhere though. The <laughs> any any restaurant we go to, anything, bartender right? in the casino. Yeah, the, yeah, random. Big big fan of Bart's. Yeah, JK or vlogs or something. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they they I mean they they've dominated YouTube for a very long time, and 
multiple genres. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of the thing. It's like, yeah, you can find a wild meathead in the world when we're cruising around, but you would just find someone that likes family vlogs. Yeah. That could be anybody. Yeah. No, you know, I haven't had many bad experiences. There's been some weird shit, but nothing too bad. Nothing I'm too upset about. All right. I think that's pretty good. But yeah, more events coming, hopefully. There's a little thing here. we got to have a team meeting about it, but our boy Seabass competing is kind of like a powerlifting expo. Talking about it a little bit in San Jose. I'll probably be at that, cheering on Seabass. Whether the company will make an impression there or not, who knows. That's what we've got to meet about. Um, Olympia's back in Vegas. I don't want to, but I might. You know, Bart lives there. It's just easy. So there'll, there'll be opportunities to see the world again. Yeah. And USAPL just, Nats or USPA Nats, maybe. Yeah. Say hi. You can always say hi. You can say thank you. You can appreciate things that we've done. We can appreciate the fact that you have paid attention to things we've done. Yeah. Yeah. Don't hurt. Yeah. Don't hurt. Or just talk to us every day in Discord. We'll see you. Yeah. That, yeah exactly. We're totally accessible <clears throat> in, 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 in Discord. If you want to, you know. Ask us a question. Don't uh, there won't always be an answer to to anything that we were not going to cover on the show. But yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see you in there. New episodes every uh, Wednesday, Friday, folks. Appreciate you. Three SB dot co. New stuff dropping very soon. Trickling in. Big launch coming into August. Um, and I'm selling Mike everywhere you want to find me. Hey, Matthew Jim McD on all the social media. This show is fifty percent facts, where percent is a word, and fifty is just numbers. The show is a Spreaker Prime podcast uh, in association with iHeartMedia on the Obscure Celebrity Network, and we'll talk to you next time. Oh,